Good morning and welcome to Repairing with Richard. First of all, the theme of this show is our souls. Yes, our souls. I'm going to say it again. I'm repairing Paul's our souls. Yes, I am. And just also, let's be very, very clear. This is not a sewing tutorial show. No, you can find those elsewhere. This is simply a vlog. I'm just telling you what I'm doing today. And I'll show you and maybe share a few hints and tips with you, but I'm not a seamstress. Or a seamster. What's the male version? Taylor. Dunno. Correct me. Anyway. In the spirit, the spirit, excuse me, by the way, I'm, I'm, you know, in my scruffy clothes today. It's a sort of, you know, what day is it? It's Thursday, and it's the sort of do the things around the house and all those jobs that need to be done day, today. And I just thought I'd take you along for the journey, for the ride, our souls. So, we've got two pairs of jeans to repair. Now, you can just about see the area of wearage right in the crotchal region underneath. And I've actually done a repair already on this hole. Just normal stitching round and round and round and round and round again backwards and forwards several times, a virtually invisible repair. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to also patch that because I don't know whether you can see, but there is more wearage around the cheekal region. Isn't it amazing how a couple of soft bum cheeks can cause so much wear on tough denim? This one had a massive rip. I mean, it was massive. I don't know whether you can see where I've done the repair. Again, where directly between the cheeks from stretching and chafing and rubbing. But look, all the way along there, massive rip. So I've done loads of stitching three times, gone over and over, and right up there just to strengthen the fabric. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply two patches. And I've got some rough patches that I've made with old denim from old jeans, cut-offs. And all I do is cut out a rough square I do a rough hem there. I cut the corners off the square and fold over. Yeah. Rough, rough hem. And then I'm going to stitch that on, that region. And I'm going to do one on both sides of the seam. And I'm going to stitch them on. And hey presto, those jeans can be used again for gardening. For gardening. They're good jeans. They're Jasper Conrad's. I know. And then I've got two more repairs to do. That's why it's Repair with Richard Day. Oh. I've got these. These lovely little sort of... I don't know where they're from. Some place. Probably India. Now these are lovely three-quarter lengths which I wear in the summer, they're very light. I don't know whether they're cotton or whether they're man-made, I'm not sure. But I was wearing them at a garden party one evening, a dinner party, and my friend said to me, oh, you've got a hole in your trousers, I can see your underwear, it's pink. It wasn't my underwear, it was my scrotum. Nobody likes peekaboo pants on a man. 
So that's got to be repaired. That's going to be an easy job. Simply so, so, so inside, inside for an invisible repair. Yes, just there. I'm just going to sew that back up. And then the fourth repair one has to do today is this nightshirt, which I love. This is my quite short nightshirt. This is the one that I answered the door wearing to the postman one day. Yes. And that's gone in the chest region. I know, it's just ripped there. Oh, it's the pigeons. Hello. Um, it's not on a seam, so it's going to have to be a repair that I do on the underside, the inside. I'm just going to have to pinch and sew, just to strengthen it up. And it's a night garment, nobody sees it. Okay, thank you. So that's what I've got to do. And I just thought I'd bring you along for the ride and have a little chat, a little chat -eek. Um That's the smaller patch for the small hole. I know they're rough. I mean, Vivi's gonna be going mad. I mean, I don't even cut the squares out neatly. Oh, it's just a tacking stitch to hold them down. Oh, it's lovely. I love it. So yeah, what have I been doing today? Um, this repairs a few bits of housework. Um, I'm sat here in the front room. It's a grey, grey day. We've had two days, two bloody days of grey skies. I've got the windows open. There are people walking past, looking at me. Yes, hello. Take a picture, it'll last longer. You know what? I feel like I'm in a zoo. I really do. Now I know how Harry and Meghan feel. And you know what? I think I've sorted their problem out, really. No, I do. I suppose I should thread this needle. Um... The thing in the news today about Harry and Meghan, you know, how they've moved to Canada, but it's not going to make any difference because, frankly, um, the paparazzi are worse in Canada, apparently. I said to Paul, I said, why don't they just become YouTubers, vloggers, get a channel? Why not? Because then, all the curiosities would be satisfied. Nobody would care anymore about them. The paparazzi would not be able to get any exclusives because they'd given them already. And yeah, why not? That's what I'd do. I mean, you know, if you're watching this, Harry and Meghan, which they might be, because I believe we are favorites of the royal family, we do have 7.9 million subscribers in New Zealand alone. And um, if you are watching, my darlings, give me a call. Send me a message. I'll help you set it up. I can help you learn how to edit. Yeah. I'm just going to thread this needle. Oh, I'm going cross-eyed. Go on, get in there. Bring that one. Go and do it. It's awesome. Oh, go on. That's it. It got in there. Lovely. So, yeah, you know, I do feel sorry for them, but hey, they are millionaires. You know, really. I mean, Maybe this move wasn't that well thought out, really. I mean, you know, thinking that they were going to get away from it all. You know, people not taking photos. Somebody stood out there. 
cheeky bitch. She's on her phone looking in here. Cheeky cow. Honestly, some people, they've got no shame. I've always said there's only two questions for a stalker. Do you want to come in for a cup of tea or shall I call the police? <clears throat> so I'm going to do this one next. I'm going to sew this one because this one will be easy. No, it will. Well, maybe not that. Oh. What's happened? Oh, okay. Oh. So it's come out from in there as well. Oh. Buggeration. So it's come off. I thought this would be simple. No, that can wait till later. That can wait till later. I'll do the crotch or region on this one. <clears throat> on the peekaboo pants. So, inside out. Do you ever sew things to yourself when you're repairing? I did earlier. I sewed one of those patches to my <laughs> jogging pants. I know. Crazy. So, inside out. So yeah, what else has been going on with ours? Um, what day is it? Thursday, Thursday. Work, work's been quite busy, but not too horrendous this week. Not too horrendous, it's been um, manageable, manageable. So I feel like I've got a bit of energy today. Back again, that bloody pigeon. Um, yeah, I feel as though I've got the energy to do things today, which is nice because I've got a few projects that I need to start. I've got a couple of decorating projects that I need to get on with. Um, oh God, this is not as simple as it looks either. Oh, why do things have to get... Oh no, that's okay. Let me see. I just need to sew along there. Just to bring it back together. I mean, at the end of the day, sewing, my mum taught me to sew, but she wasn't a seamstress. She's the kind of person that you go, you know, round and round and round to hold the fabric together. I mean, at the end of the day, if you're in the field in a war situation, you've got to stitch somebody up. You're not going to say, do you want a tacking stitch or a running stitch, sir? Are you? You're just going to sew to hold the skin together. Well, I sew just to hold the fabric together. I don't really care how it looks. I mean, the regions I'm sewing are regions that you don't look at closely anyway. Well, you might do. If you've just started some torrid affair or something. <laughs> I haven't, so... Well, I better get on with... The... Oh, yeah. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. Oh, it's got two bits to it. <sighs> it's never simple, is it? Although the state of that inside. <sighs> anyway, I'm gonna get on with this now. <sighs> I'll see you later when I've done the repairs. I'll show you my progress. Like I said before, you know, it doesn't matter if it shows, it's only a nightshirt. But I mean, you'll be able to see the pinch, obviously where I've had to pinch the material together. Oh, that's the, sorry, it's a bit of a mess. Oh, it's going on. Right. So that's the, that's where the rip was. Just a little 
pinch, a couple sort of fake seam, I guess. Not bad. Done. So that's the first patch done. I kind of had a problem. I had to unpick part of it because I hadn't, because I'm not a, you know, a whatever, a tailor, seamstress, whatever, I don't really take into account certain things, you know, so um, I don't automatically look at the way the fabric's moving or behaving. I mean, I did take into account, obviously, that the fabric is worn um, and that it's baggy. But what happened was I was kind of going, I was really working in a very straight line and actually what I needed to do was bring the fabric round. So it had, it had sort of rocked up, but I unpicked the corner and I appear to have kind of got it okay. Because it's difficult, I mean you can see there's a little bit of a little bit of a rock there but that doesn't matter. Um, but you can kind of see because I've had to go, sorry I can't control fabric very well, because I had to go down the main seam because the weakness is actually here right against the seam. I wanted to go on top, it's kind of kinked it but it's kinky anyway because it's it's warped from Paul's arse. <sighs> yes. But I think that's acceptable. There's going to be another patch on the other side anyway, on here. But the first one's intact, the repair is underneath, as I said before, and it's sturdy denim. And you know, I think that's okay. I think that's I mean there there is a sort of weak spot there, but We'll just have to see how it goes and I'll patch again if need be. But the thing I'm most delighted about, yes, it's taken me quite a long time to do it. It's taken me a good few hours. But what I'm most happy about is the fact that Paul will be able to use these jeans again in the garden because he likes wearing jeans in the garden. Um, he... We're not throwing these away. He will be able to use them and use them and not have to buy another pair and not have to start using a, a good pair to work in the garden. So we're reusing, we're repurposing. I'm using denim that I already had. I've got cotton that I've already had. It hasn't cost me anything other than time. Um, so I'm really pleased. So I've just got to do the other one now. It's hard on the fingers because denim is really tough. Um, I've had, what I've been doing is using a, a small square of denim that was an off cut um, with the seam. And when it's been tough, I've been using that to push through, push the needle through, because I haven't got a thimble. I thought I had a thimble, but I haven't. Um, so that's, I think that's good. I'm pleased with my repair. So I'm going to carry on, do the other side, and then he can start wearing them. And if I've got any little bits that I need, that I think need to be done again, there's a corner there that could be done a bit more, um, then I'll do it. But yeah, I think that's not bad at all. Let's look at the other side inside. So it shows the stitching. I mean, for somebody who's not you know, a sewer, I don't think that's too bad. Good. Uh, anyway, 
So, I'll carry on with this. You carry on with what you're doing today. Um, and we will see you, what day is it, Thursday? Um, we'll see you on, oh, yeah, Sunday, Sunday, for Sunday chat. Good, lovely. Thank you very much for watching, spending some time with me today on this very grey day, still grey. Disgusting, it's the afternoon now. Carry on sewing, Richard. Carry on sewing. Yay! Bye for now, take care. Thank you.